skeleton key here. Just going to do sort of a quick little wrap up of 2020 and my top reads for 2020. Not necessarily books that were released in 2020, but um, books that I actually read in 2020. Uh, that'll be my top 10. And then also just sort of a peek at my first part of 2021 and my five star predictions for that. So without further ado, so my top reads of 2010, 2010, 2020, I wrote down 2010. My top 10 reads of 2020, and these are in no particular order. They're just, I, you know, was going through my list of, and I had a lot of five star reviews. Uh, well, I read 172 books. And oh, let's, let's, let's create some tension here. So I'm not going to tell you just yet what my top 10 are. I read 172 books in 2020. And I do count like children's books and graphic novels and short stories that have been published, standalone, that sort of thing. Did I don't do a whole lot of statistics, which is kind of surprising because I really like statistics. I really like data, but I didn't really do a whole lot of that this year. Um, but I did do sort of a breakdown of books I got from the library versus books I got off my shelves. So for library books, I broke that down between digital and paper of some sort. And digital including like books on CD. And that I read about 37% of that 172 was in some sort of digital format from the library. So paper books, so hardcovers, paperbacks, that was a really, really small percentage. That was only 4%. And so you add that up, um, comes to about 41%. About 41% of my reading came from the library. And so for books I owned, about 28% of my reading for the year was some sort of digital format book that I owned. And then 17% was some sort of paper format of books that I owned. So that comes to 45%. So I, I read more, not, not significantly more, but I read a little bit more of my owned books than library borrows. And then I read 6% and I just marked them as other. There was a lot of content made available on various platforms um, at the beginning of the pandemic, mostly children's books, some companies and organizations making other content available at no charge. So, so I can't really, and they, they were streaming, so I can't say that I actually owned them, um, but I also didn't borrow them from the library. So I just stuck those under other. And then the remaining 8% of my reading in 2020 was a combination of sorts. It, in most cases, it's like I have a hard copy of the book and for whatever reason, I decided to borrow it in another format from the library or something, um, or I switched back and forth. You know, sometimes I would have the Audible version or the Libro FM version, and then I would, if I also had access, if I owned or had access to a paper copy, hard copy of it, then I would sometimes read along with it. I did that a lot with some of my posts. <laughs> I, I, I double checked and that does add up to 100%. Yay! Math worked for once. Yeah, I have trust issues with numbers, so math is not always my friend. All right, so now we'll get to my top 10 reads of 2020. So the first one is Stamped from the Beginning by Ibram X. Kendi. And that was a combo one. That was one that I, I had a paper copy, but I also listened to it on Spotify. They they had the audio narration. And so that, that one that is that is one that worked really well for that, for, you know, reading along, but also having that narration. So that is an excellent book for getting a lot of information about how this nation was founded on racist principles 
and it's really never let up and it goes into a lot of detail it can be a little dry and a lot of it is hard to hear especially if you're white but it's it's very important I, ha I have not read Stamped, which is the YA version of the book, so I can't really speak to that. But if you can get a hold of a copy of, of at least this one or Stamped, either one, I'd say go for it. Um, it's definitely worth reading. Uh, the next is The Cask of Amontillado, which I think, I mean, I haven't read all of the post stories yet, but that has got to be my favorite post story so far. I mean, it's a really compact story of perceived injustice and vengeance whether or not it's deserved is you never really know as the reader do you then number three nerdy shy and socially inappropriate by Cynthia Kim it's about being autistic strategies for coping with being autistic, providing a greater understanding if, say, you aren't autistic, or even if you are autistic, and how to understand autistic people in your life. Um, and it especially speaks to, to how autistic girls and women are, are treated and perceived and and everything that goes along with that. So I do highly recommend that if you have any interest in autism or autistic women, it really clarifies a lot of things that, that I don't think get discussed or treated very well in, in the media. And then, oh, and I actually have a copy of this one available, All the Broken People by Amy Rivers. And I've talked a lot about this one lately. This is a very character-driven murder mystery and set in rural Georgia. Lots of kudzu. Yeah. Great, great book. Then Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. And that's another female protagonist who is autistic or neurodivergent of some sort, but my money's on autistic. How she copes with life in Japan by being a convenience store woman and how that works out for her and how it maybe doesn't. And yeah, it's, and it's really short. So I highly recommend that one. Next is Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. And that is, it's either kind of the young end of YA, maybe older middle grade. I'm not super clear on those distinctions, but I mean, Ivy Aberdeen, um, it starts off with basically her, her house getting destroyed by a tornado. So it's, it's all in the aftermath of that and her sketchbook of girls holding hands went missing in the aftermath of that and so she's desperate to find that and she's coming to terms with her sexual identity it's beautifully written it's a very touching read it's I just think it's beautifully done and then NPCs by Drew Hayes it's a really funny and sweet take on so what happens if your entire Dungeons and Dragons party gets poisoned uh and the npcs decide well there's a quest to be done here so i guess we'll do it uh <laughs> much wackiness ensues and it's great fun but it also has a lot a lot of really good good messages in it it's it's delightful and I listened to that on audiobook. Tracking Game by Margaret Mizushima. And that is, I believe, book five. It's either book four or book five in uh, Margaret's uh, Timber Creek Canine series. So it takes place in this fictional mountain town in Colorado. Robo is a canine deputy and 
Matty Cobb is his handler, and uh, of course they they solve crimes and catch bad guys, and so it's a police procedural. So there's awesome dogs, and so if you're a dog person, yeah, yeah, do this one. And of course, Matty um, Matty Cobb, the the human protagonist, she has a lot going on in her personal life, so. There is a lot of that, you know, that started in back in book one. And so there's there's this running thread of her trying to find out more about her family and and things that happen with that. There's a lot to it. It's it's really good. I love that whole series. Uh and then I've got two on here by Martha Wells. I read Rogue Protocol and Exit Strategy. Those are both Murderbot novellas. I love Murderbot. So yeah, Murderbot, five stars, awesome. Um, the first book in the series is All Systems Red. Just, just go get, go get it, go read it. It's awesome. So here you have Rogue Protocol, and you can see that's that's a pretty slim volume. This is Exit Strategy, another novella that leads perfectly into my five star predictions for this first bit of 2021. Because first on the list is Network Effect. This is the first novel in the Murderbot Diaries. I, I know it came out last year and I, I pre ordered it, I got it, and I still haven't read it. And I want to read it so bad because I just I adore Murderbot. And the next book in the series is coming out sometime this year. I know I have it pre-ordered. I pre-ordered it months ago. I've forgotten when it comes out. but So it will probably show up on my next list of five-star predictions. Alright, next on the list is Bluebird Bluebird by Attica Locke. I really don't know a whole lot about that one, but it's gotten so much good buzz. I can't remember who recommended it for my mystery book club that I'm in, but uh, but I seem to recall that it's somebody that I trust. So, Bluebird, Bluebird. And then, and so I made this list at the beginning of the year before I started on any of these five. I put The Haunting of Tramcar 015 on that list by P. Jelly Clark. Yeah, this is a five star read. I'll just tell you right now. Uh, I mean, and it's a novella, it's really short. It's set in 1910, I think. 1912. So it's set in Cairo in 1912. And it's kind of steampunky, and it's kind of mystical, and it's just tons of fun. This is the second book in the series, and I didn't realize that when I got it, but um, the first book in the series is, I think, what is it? Does this say? I think it's called A Dead Gen in Cairo. So I'm definitely going to go back and read that one. And I think there's another book in the series out now, too. Uh, but this one, I feel like this one stands on its own pretty well, that you wouldn't have to have read A Dead Gen in Cairo before reading this. So I'd say probably pick up either one, whichever one sounds more interesting to you at the time, or is actually available to you if they're not both available to you. And then Hanging Falls is another one that I... I started and read it this weekend, so but I put it on the list even before I started it. It's book six in the Timber Creek Canine series by Margaret Mizushima. Um, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, those are always going to be five star predictions. I just I love them. They're great, and uh, yeah, it was a five star read. I very, very much enjoyed that. And so that leads us to my final of my first five five-star predictions for 2021. And that is The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tavis. Um, I just, everyone keeps telling me I'm going to love this book. And I did finally start on it this afternoon. And 
so far I am. I am liking it. Chess is not my game. I, I'm crap at chess, but I want to read the book before I watch the the TV series. So, so there you go. So that's sort of a little summary of 2020 and a little look ahead at 2021. But I will keep you updated on on these five star predictions as I finish them. Yeah. Until then, please like and subscribe and see you around.